All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, for, those, for those who don't know me, I'm Luke Diggins, Agronomy Manager with Pro Co-op based in Scobie and throughout Northeast Montana. I've served as a MABA board member for five years and I'm currently the board president. I'll be your moderator for this morning's sessions. Want to thank you for, for participating in the MABA Great Montana Egg Rally. Uh, this is a great series of one hour educational workshops to help our membership continue to stay informed and up to speed on the latest technology and information. Uh, today is going to be a little different than our normal sessions. You've probably heard a lot of things about agronomy and uh, related technical technical uh, industry stuff up till this point, but today we're, we're very excited to hear from Dr. Bajwa uh, with Montana State University. Uh, and then also Dr. Mary Burroughs, also with Montana State University, and I'll introduce those people here shortly. Um, we'll also hear words from Senator Daines, Senator Tester, and Representative-elect uh, Matt Rosendale. So uh, a little different format to this today. Um, but it's, it's going to be good, I think, to catch up with with the legislative world in that manner. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Bayer Crop Science for their support of the rally and the support of MAB in general and for sponsoring this session. We'll hear a few words from Bayer's own uh, local legend, Carrie Yates, prior to starting the rest of the presentation. And uh, we'll go from there. For this session, I've uh, got a few minutes here to cover, and I'd like to thank everybody for uh, their support last year. Uh, save your questions to the end. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do that at the end uh, if I can get this thing to work in advance. Uh, in 2020, we had eight, over 800 people sign up for Bayer Plus. It was a huge success as far as we're concerned number-wise. Uh, we're still trying to complete the, the final cleanup of a, a lot of guys who didn't quite get uh, uh, sales and everything matched together, but it was a great year for us. And uh, we made some changes for the 2021 season. The first, the first thing a farmer must do is he must match these two products. So that can be seed, herbicides, fungicide, insecticides. He earns three bucks an acre for if he matches two two products. Uh, a good example, RT3. And R, remember, RT3 matches, a, and it was a, a two dollars. Now it matches one dollar, uh, starting November first. So the guys in the fall earn two bucks. Now it's one dollar, but still on a to each herbicide, that's still a $4 a gallon discount on RT3, which makes it cheaper than any generic out there. A good example, Olympus and Husky, a grower earns $3, but the RT3 matches a dollar to it, so it's $5 an acre. Scoparia has been added for the, for the 2021 season. Uh, Valent products have been added as an add-on. And brokered product, we will not pay on brokered product, even, the, even if it's submitted uh, into ag data. Uh, unless they have the purchasing purchases from a qualified distributor, those don't qualify. Uh, the grower, the growers can still enroll for 2021. Uh, one thing I still get calls from guys waiting for their check. The grower actually has to go into my bear plus and request a check. And if they're in the 2020 program, they're qualified. If they qualify for 2020, they'll qual they're already in for 2021. They don't need to do anything. Uh, I want to take a few my few minutes that I have to, to go over with you. Uh, we have a huge bear has a huge portfolio now from West Bread Seed to Seed Treat to herbicides to fungicides and our digital platform Climate View. Uh, we've got a lot of offerings for farmers, uh, but I would like to I'd like to cover just a few of those today. We're not going to cover all of them. I'm not going to cover fungicides today. We'll we'll do that on another session of bear sponsors. But I do want to start with seed treats. Evergold, Raxel, Raxel Pro, and Gaucho, and uh, I was able to get. I've been able to go down with Dr. Dyer the last couple of years and look at his plots in Bozeman. And in 2018, 2019, uh, he said that Evergold and Raxel were one of the two top performers in his, in his seed treatment trials on small grains. And in 2020, short trials, Evergold Energy performed great on the diseases that we tested for. 
And we tested for Rhizoctonia, common root rot, two, two fusariums, and pink snow mold. And on the picture, you can see on the left, the fusarium just took the stand where Evergold fixed the problem. Also, the one he's concerned about growing in Montana increasing is the uh, uh, common root rot. And uh, on the left, you can see it's a half stand versus the Evergold on the right. We, we we fix that problem. One of the advantages of Evergall is also if we can use it on pulses as well, the same rate, one ounce, one ounce per hundred. And you can see the fusarium on, this is reversed. The fusarium on the right just took a half, half the P stand. And on the left with the Evergall, we totally corrected the problem. So that's just a few pictures of some of the seed treat stuff we've been working on and in trying to make improvements. One thing everybody forgets is that we do have Bathroid and Leverage. And, and the, the base ingredient in Tempo, which everybody's familiar with, is Tempo, is Bathroid. And Bathroid, uh, can, we've had it, uh, guys using Bathroid because it, first off, it's an agronomic add-on in Bayer Plus, uh, but it also controls armyworms, cutworms, flea beetles, grasshoppers, and many more problems. It's a great insecticide. We've changed the pricing structures, totally changed on Bathroid. It's one that you should probably look at. Uh, also, Leverage 360 is a full product in, Bay in Bayer Plus, uh, and Bathroid is the exact same formulation as Tempo, only with the ag label. And so where Tempo has in your house, uh, wherever, on the, in the restaurants, whatever, uh, Leverage, Leverage has all the ag labels, garden labels, and everything else. And the best part about both Bayfroid and Leverage is it's a 12-hour re-entry period versus most insecticides are 24 hours. You could actually spray it in the morning and back in the garden in the afternoon with great, with great safety. Let's talk about the cereal herbicides real quick. I'm, I'm going to hit them real quick and just to highlight a few of them and, and, and some new ones. Uh, you're all familiar with Olympus. There's one part of the Olympus label I've never liked, and that's the point, point 0.2 ounces. Uh, I've never liked that alone because the guys will put it on the fall or early in the spring pre-plant, and then they forget to do the second step. And if you want to get resistance, that'd be how to do it. I'd prefer that guys, instead of doing that, take, instead of putting it down pre-plant, I'd prefer they add the two tenths to the rimfire. Rimfire already has two tenths of Olympus, so you add it, now you're at 0.4. And 0.4 still does not have rotational restrictions. And, and it also makes the rim fire work much better on larger cheatgrass and wild oats. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, that's how I would use rim fire. It, we really grew sales in rim fire last year and appreciate the support. Uh, Husky, you're familiar with group 27 and a group six in there, the Brominol. A uh, great on kosher Russian thistles solved lots of issues. We're going to introduce F Husky FX for 2021. FX is a, a mix of Husky, uh, Romanol, and we've added Star Rain to it. The reason for doing that is I've seen I've seen fields on the in the triangle where where Star Rain is starting not to work like it used to. It's having some real issues with resistance building. And if we don't, if we do the, if we do the same thing with Husky and let it be a standalone, we're going to have run into the same problems down the road. So we want to offer guys uh, the combination of Husky and Star Rain. Uh, the rates are, we have a rate from 13 to 18 ounces. Do not do the, the lower rate. It doesn't, didn't perform like we wanted it to. It, the recommended rate is 15 to 18 ounces. Uh, it's a nine-month rotation to most crops. Uh, not a problem for, for chickpeas, but uh, peas and lentils is 18 months. Uh, that's the, that would be the downside to it. A great broad-spectrum leaf control, weed control. Wolverine Advanced, oh, back up. <laughs> Wolverine Advanced is one, uh, if I can get it to do this, back up. <laughs> there we go. Wolverine Advanced, we designed that. It's a group one, and everybody forgets that we do have a group one similar to Axial, uh, and it's designed to compete with Axial uh, Star because it's, it's, uh, it is our group one, Brominol, and we've added Husky to it, and that's Wolverine Advanced. Uh, great grasses and broadleaf weed control, wheat, barley, and durum. And this guy, guy's asking about the safety. Well, if we're putting it on barley, we've got pretty good safety. Uh, and the main thing with this one is just get wild oats prior to tillering before the five to leaf stage. 
Osprey Extra, we've added we've added some stuff just to get better jointed goat grass control. Uh, it's used in winter wheat for and and jointed goat grass has continued to get larger in the state of Montana. And we've gone to Osprey Extra, better jointed goat grass control. Luxor we introduced last year. Uh, it comes with Luxor A and B, two, uh, four, four, four bottles in a case. You put in two, an A and a B, and you get 40 acres. All four is 80 acres. We introduced it last year, but we didn't get a lot of product in the, in the western Montana. Most of it wound up in eastern Montana. Uh, performs really well on hard-to-control weeds. Uh, does really has been doing a really good job on lots of weeds like hawksbeard and what I'd like it for is Canadian thistle control. It's about in all of our trials, it averages 84% control of Canadian thistles. The best part about it is that 14% that comes later in the fall. Guys are telling me Roundup's not killing Canadian thistle like it used to, and I always, when they say that, I can always find that they've used. They've used a product in crop that banged it up, like a wide match or something like that, that banged up that 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 thistle. So when it comes back in the fall, it's not growing very well, and we can't kill it. Well, Luxor does not do that. That 14% that comes back in the fall, I can hit that Canadian thistle in the fall, and we can actually clean up Canadian thistle problems by using Luxor in crop and a Roundup application in the fall. Uh, I want to spend the rest of my time on fallow. Uh, uh, and some kosher tips. And here's here's the, my list of uh, takeaways. In Montana, glyphosate-resistant kosher has not expanded as fast as they said it would. It's been slow. It is around, but it's been slow. Uh, in June, the June application is the key. Do not cut the rates in June. Guys go out with 18 to 24 ounces in April, May, and they're happy with this. So they use the same rate in June and just bang up that kosher when it gets bigger, and they're just not doing it. That's the one we're, that's the one we're screwing up on is that June application. Those growers who spray every 25 to 30 days are doing a much better job and not having the kosher problems that the other guys are who are waiting and trying to get by save an application. There, that is one of the keys to, fa to f kosher control and fallow is spraying every 25 to 30 days. And just because glyphosate didn't kill kosher in July and August does not mean it's resistant. I had a guy last year who banged it up in June. I tried helping him in July. We went with two quarts of Roundup. And I had him double up on the hand, so it was a gallon of Roundup. And that dinged up kosher at the end of July, uh, that gallon of Roundup didn't even touch it. It didn't even look like it was sprayed. Yet a month later, the end of August, we got some rains and cooled off. He went out to spray 24 ounces pre-plant, and that kosher was green when he sprayed a pre-plant, and he totally roasted that kosher because it got moisture, started to regrow, and the 24 ounces cleaned it up. So I, I would have swore it was resistant in July and August, and it wasn't. It had nothing to do with resistance. It was just banged up kosher. I do not believe tillage is the answer, long-term answer. A couple of tillages can drop that organic matter so fast and reduce your yields, and that is not where we need to be going, is reducing yields. Uh, residual products in fallow work well. Most of them fall applied, but they all, spring applied, I've not seen one I've, that I've been happy with. Uh, I think Scopari and Metribuzins are more consistent when they're applied in this, is when they're consistently applied in the spring, they work better. And one other thing I wanted to add, farmers are creating their own resistance. And here's how it's, it's not, some in some cases blown in from the neighbor but not all cases and a good example is these new sprayers are so precise uh, when they spray the edge of their field uh, that last 24 30 inches is a half rate because it takes two nozzles to give you a full rate so that edge of that field is where we're creating that resistant kosher and you can see in this picture the guy totally roasted the stuff in the fourth part of the picture but that one plant survived and you hit that plant three or four times a year with a half rate, and that's where you're creating resistance. Resistance isn't coming from the water holes. It's not coming off the road edges. It's coming without where you're spraying it with a half rate three and four times a year. And so that is one of the keys. In August, the guy needs to go out and, and edge his own fields, and there isn't that many plants in that 20-inch zone, but the few plants that are there, you need to, they need to spray them out and get rid of them, and that will stop the resistance, except for their neighbors blowing across them, but that will stop a lot of resistance growing on their own place. And I've followed a lot of these trails that guys have resistant kosher. You can follow the trails right to the edge of their own fields, not their neighbor's field. Uh, Scoparia is labeled for fall and spring applications. 
uh, looks really good. Uh, as long as it's applied before May 1st, I had guys do it in May, a little bit into May, but that's when they knew they was going to get a rainstorm. It works well. We mix it with Roundup. The, the sequence is Scopari and in, in April, early May. Then you come in in June with some Roundup 2,4-D for some grass control, clean it up, and then you don't touch it until you spray and pre-plant. And that's the program that works really well. Uh, here's a picture from a field last year up in Joplin. You can see that the, the spray skippy left in the field, all kosher and Russian thistle, and the field field was clean. The field on the right was another field of his that looked really good uh, late late June. This is the one that Wilbur Ellis gave me that they did uh, in 19. And you can see that banged up, on the picture on the left, you can see the banged up kosher Russian thistle all beat up. Uh, that line is where we switched over to, we added Scopar, round, went Roundup and Scoparia, and you can see in the picture on the right in July, that feels what, what fallow needs to look like, not with a bunch of dinged up kosher. So we can we can address this kosher with your issue with uh, Scoparia and Metribuzin. Uh, here's, we have, I have sheets I've sent out to everybody. If you need one, we can get you one that you've requested. Uh, the rates there in the spring applied is 1.5 of Scoparia. And I like the six ounce rates rate of Metribuzin. Uh, and there's the, the, we have the, and here's the rotational chart. Uh, we don't have any rotational issues to chickpeas, but once again, uh, if you're going to do fallow, you're going to see winter wheat anyway, probably. But uh, you would not be able to go peas and peas and lentils the following year with Scopario. But uh, everything else is pretty much a go except sugar beets. Uh, anyway, I think that is where we're ending there, Luke. Should be my time. Awesome. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate the update. Um, and MEBA definitely appreciates Bayer Crop Sciences' support on uh, sponsoring this event and, and many others. So again, thanks to Bear. All right, uh, moving forward, just uh, just so as an FYI for everybody um, regarding questions, all attendees are muted. Um, you can type your questions in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. Um, you know, we might be able to answer the questions through the presentation directly with the speaker or me as a moderator can ask those at the end. We should have plenty of time today to get to that. Um, if you're interested in attending the next session, which will be the MABA annual meeting, it'll start at 1030. Uh, I strongly encourage you to, to join us for that. If you're not already registered to do that, uh, go to Montana or www.mtagbiz.org. With that, um, we'll get started with some words from Montana State University. First off, we are thrilled to have um, a couple people join us. Dr. Srikla Bajwa, she's the Vice President, Dean and Director of the College of Egg and Montana Egg Experiment Station. So Dr. Bajwa, go ahead. Thank you, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, nowadays, or for the last 10 months, this is our only way of seeing each other and communicating with each other. So I am I'm very happy to be here, and thank you for this chance to, to talk to all of you. I will give you know, um, Kerry's presentation here gave me some nostalgia. It was reminding me of my days of field research, particularly working with the weeds and uh, resistant weeds. Uh, thanks, Kerry, for that educational uh, presentation there. Now, in uh, talking about uh, Montana MSU College of Agriculture and the Montana Agricultural Experiment Station, as you know, the experiment station has a mission of research, and the college uh, does mostly teaching, but the teaching and research. And, and this last one year has been um, Interesting is a, is a word that is coming to my mind, but just like everyone else, we had our share of troubles with the COVID and, uh, and the restrictions that uh, followed COVID. Um, however, our, our research, you know, mainly because our, we do a lot of field research, our research continued uninterrupted. Even lab research, you know, there were restrictions, there were difficulties, but lab research also continued. So this last year, 
Uh, Montana State University reported an all-time high research expenditure of $167 million, and uh, our college had the highest or the largest share of that research expenditure. So we, we also saw an increase in, we meaning the College of Ag saw an increase in um, our research expenditure um, by 4% to 44 million. In other words, you know, whatever our state is investing in us, for every dollar our state invests in Montana State, Montana Agricultural Experiment Station, our faculty and staff brought in another $1.75 to do research addressing the problems of Montanans and Montana agriculture. So we are very, very pleased, very proud of that. Um, so, uh, you know, so an example or what impact our research uh, has on Montana and uh, Montana agriculture industry. An example there is that this last year, um, our share of or the varieties that we developed at the Montana Ag Experiment Station, their, their share of planted acreage went up. Um, in, uh, uh, in Montana, 72% of winter wheat planted, 40% of spring wheat planted, and 42% of barley were planted with the uh, maize. Maize is Montana Ag Experiment Station. So they were planted with the maize varieties and the, we are very proud. I am very proud of that fact. This is only, only one kind of research that we do. There are, there are all other areas, including COVID. You know, we have several researchers working in, uh, in these you know, different aspects of COVID. Um, and they came forward, started doing testing for the state and, uh, and studying wastewater. And so there, there have been a lot of impact to this, if I just say this last year, but uh, throughout the existence of Montana Ag Experiment Station. Um, and in, in staying, you know, I, I was looking at, I got a booklet about this Montana Ag Rally and I, lo I looked at it and the one word that stuck to my mind or in my mind, that is Agriculture 4.0. So aligning ourselves with Agriculture 4.0, um, right now Montana Ag Experiment Station is looking at the two areas to expand our research on, and that is precision agriculture. If you, if you do a search online on Agriculture 4.0, you would see that a precision ag is the, you know, comes up with that word. So precision ag is an area that we are interested in and working on um, expanding our activities or our research activities in. And another is agricultural in innovation. Uh, in precision ag area, we recently had a large gift. If you look at our foundation page, there is a news release on that. Um, we had a $2 million gift from Northwest Farm Credit Services and a one and a half million dollar in that is for um, uh, building, developing, expanding our precision agriculture research and education in Montana. So we are we are very excited. That will give us a um, a great start to do something um, uh, something important for Montana agriculture. And then you know I can't talk about agriculture without talking on the college side. On the college side, this last year we saw a drop in enrollment, a small drop. Um, so we, we were close to 17,000 students before the pandemic. And after the pandemic, we, our enrollment came down to around 16,200, um, around 16,200 students. We saw a similar drop in our enrollment. This is for fall of 2019, this la last semester. So in, in the college, we saw a drop in the uh, enrollment from 2,050 students to roughly 2,000 students. This semester, it is too early to say where, where we are on enrollment. It is in the fourth week of classes that we have the official numbers coming out. We are not there yet, but our anticipation is that we are going to see another drop in the enrollment. So we are kind of bracing for um, a little bit uh, um, drawback there. I, I still have to say, compared to another other institutions in the state and many other land-grant institutions across the nation, our enrollment is still 
uh, very strong. And uh, although it's, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a setback this semester. And then, you know, everybody's uh, thinking about what is happening in, in or, uh, or the legislative session must be in everybody's mind at this point. It is in our minds too. Um, actually, the legislature will, legislature will start discussing our budget uh, tomorrow. And in this legislative session, we are looking forward to two things. One is a hold even budget. In our, our research is very important to Montana. I gave you a, a few examples here. Um, for Montana agriculture, we, I consider maize as the research and development, arm, not the development particularly, but a research arm of agriculture industry in the state. So a hold even budget is important because over 85% of the state budget that we get goes into supporting people, faculty and staff, who go out, who, uh, go out and, and do their research and who uh, are addressing problems that are important to, to Montana agriculture. So any kind of bud budget reduction would mean a reduction in the, in the people, in the researchers, and a loss of research expertise for us. So that is our number one priority, this legislative session. And our number two is, uh, you know, the, there are two. One is a general budget discussion in the legislature, but there is also a long range building plan discussion that is set for February 3 for sure, maybe on February 1 as well. Um, so, Montana State University, the L, L, we call it LRBP, the long range building plan, uh, the university has submitted. The number one priority there was a maze request. Um, we are requesting um, chemistry and instrumentation lab at to five of our research centers, a horticulture building at the Core Valleys, and a new a state of the art wool lab here in Bozeman. That is our number one request. And all together, we are asking for 11 million for all these um, from the state and the authority to raise another 1.3 million. This is very important to us. You know, we have uh, uh, faculty members in our research centers doing excellent research. Um, uh, you know, I, I take an example in our Southern Ag Research Center. Uh, we have a, a faculty member who is uh, uh, very, um, very good in bringing external grant support for research. However, he's asking whether he can move to Bozeman because there is no research infrastructure. The, ki the kind of lab setup he needs, it's not there. So this is a, a problem we are facing when, when it comes to recruiting faculty to our research centers and retaining them. Faculty retention is a big issue and the lab in infrastructure would be a big boost to attracting faculty to our research centers and retaining them. So our LRBP request is very, very important, not only for faculty retention and, and bringing in new talent to these research centers, but also to make sure that we are addressing today's challenges with the new skills and the new talents in our faculty. Um, so that's a, that's a primarily our, our uh, legislative, not primarily, that's our, our legislative request. And uh, next week, January 25th, they are going to be discussing our budget in detail and I'll be going and uh, speaking. And the public will also have an opportunity to go and provide the comments during that public comment section. So I am looking forward to, I know that Krista comes and talks uh, during that public comment session. So I am uh, looking forward to providing my comments and, uh, and uh, hoping for support from our friends and our, uh, our uh, constituents. And certainly Maba is uh, our, uh, our friend and our constituent. So that's my update. If you have any questions, I would be happy to take that. I want to keep it short so Mary also has a, a, an opportunity to speak. Thank you, Dr. Bajwa. Um, if anybody has any questions for Dr. Bajwa, please go ahead and type that in the Q&A and uh, we can certainly address those now, or we can also look at those right after Dr. Burroughs 
uh, gives her update. One question I would have um, from MAPA standpoint, Dr. Bajwa, is how, how do you see uh, the future as far as collaborating with industry and uh, our egg business membership um, as we look at different things that uh, the experiment stations are uh, studying? Excellent question. Thank you for asking that. You know, last time I sat down with the board, we, I shared some ideas I have. Um, some of the things I am looking at, I, I told you we have two uh, major um, interest areas we are trying to grow and emphasize. That it, one is ag innovation, another is precision ag. I think industry support is, you know, industry collaboration, partnership, partnership is very, very important in both areas. Um, in fact, this idea for ag innovation, we are calling it Montana, I am calling it Montana Ag and Bioscience Innovation Hub. The way we, that, that idea initially was brought to me by one of our alumni and somebody who retired from industry some time back from actually Bayer DuPont at the time when he was there. Um, so it is, the, the idea is to bring academia, that is university, um, industry sector, and the government together um, to address what important problems are there. And there is, a, um, there is an emphasis on economic development. It is about innovation, bringing up ideas, new ideas for, um, you know, starting from gene editing all the way through um, that end use, what what the produce that comes out of agriculture industry, um, you know, having more value um, or creating more end use for um, those produce. So that is the idea. We are at the very beginning stage of that, um, you know, still talking about uh, uh, how we can go about it. We are a big state in many ways, but we are a small state in many other ways. We are looking at other states that have this kind of uh, um, system in place. Um, I will be coming back to MABA actually to see what, uh, what uh, interest and what ideas are there. This has to be a, a true partnership if it were to succeed. Um, I, you know, again, last meeting, I talked to MABA about, uh, you know, a better collaboration or partnership in student recruitment and the student exposure to industry. So we were um, talking at the time about this idea of a, uh, a focus day. For example, you know, this could be anybody. We have one day assigned as a focus day for one industry. For example, I would say there. You will come and uh, set up a booth and the students can stop by. You can do your recruiting. Students can present why they should, uh, you know, why they are interested in you and what interests they have. You can also take that time to, to go to a class, one or two or more classes, and, uh, and they give a guest lecture and talk a little bit about what your company is doing. Um, you can meet with the faculty, interested faculty and department heads to explore a research collaboration or teaching collaboration or outreach collaboration or what, what some of the needs you have that university should be addressing. So, you know, again, COVID has put a, a little bit, slowed us down. Um, this, some of this restriction, we need to have a, a, a handle on COVID before we pursue some of this. But I am excited. There are so many opportunities for us to work uh, together, form new partnerships, and uh, um, in the meantime, you know, support and address the challenges of Montana Act. Awesome, awesome. Well, we sure appreciate that, Dr. Bajwa. And I think, uh, you know, speaking for all of our membership and, and the board of directors, we're very excited and more than willing to help um, with any sort of input it may be um, as, as you guys kind of continue to reform the whole system and, and look at the future. So we, we definitely appreciate that and, and definitely want to work with, with Montana State University for sure. Thank you. Sure. All right, um, if there's no more questions for Dr. Bajwa, we'll move on to our next speaker. Um, many, of, many of you know uh, Dr. Mary Burroughs. She's uh, been a staple in Montana agriculture for a long time. Um, 
Currently, she has changed roles. She is now the Associate Director of Montana Egg Experiment Stations and Research Development. So that's a new role, and uh, we're excited to see her in it. So Mary, go ahead. Thanks so much. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing to working with all of you in my new role. Um, as you might know, one of the focuses of my job is communication and increasing communication with our constituency. Um, as part of that, we do have the Montana Fertilizer Advisory Committee coming up, which Montana Ag Business Association has been involved with over the years. This is checkoff funds from fertilizer sales that are then invested in research opportunities. Um, there have been a lot of challenges of COVID, but there are also some opportunities, which in includes increased access to information, and there will be a public uh, panel for um, researchers to present their um, results of their research and discuss issues that are important in the fertilizer industry, and that will occur on the 25th of January. The other opportunity coming up is that Montana Wheat and Barley Committee also will be doing a public panel with researchers on the 3rd of March. So stay tuned to our websites and press releases for more details on those. Um, we have a number of new faculty in the college at research centers. We have Clint Byerman at the Northwest Ag Research Center. He is a cropping systems agronomist. Justin Vetch will be serving as the new superintendent of the Western Triangle Ag Research Center and Love Reach Chagrill as the weed scientist at the Southern Ag Research Center. We've had a lot of challenges with hiring freezes, but before those freezes, we did get um, two faculty in Ag Econ and Econ hired, four in Animal and Range, one in MBI, and one in Plant Sciences. And we also have a new forage specialist um, starting Hayes Goosey very soon. Um, we have field days coming up this summer and we're all very hopeful that they will proceed as normal or with some minor modifications. Those are listed on the college website. And we have another focus of my job is increasing the investment in faculty so we can continue those research successes that Srikla described. So we've given some mini grants to faculty. We're doing training in peer review of grants, impact statements, um, teaching people how to make videos if they're uncomfortable with that format and refreshing them on what is required for PIs and all the rules and regulations so that we can get those grants out the door. We're also hiring a grants coordinator here in the college to help facilitate those large inter interdisciplinary grants and, and take some of the burden off faculty for a lot of the routine activities. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to seeing people at field days if we can go out there. Uh, interacting with everybody on the advisory committees. I really enjoy that part of this part of my new job. And I want to thank Montana Egg Business Association for their support over the years of both the college extension research centers. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate the update. Um, you know, again, I, we're speaking for all of MEB and all the membership. I, I, we're excited you're in that role. and decided to continue working with you and and see what develops for the you know the betterment of, of montana egg so if there's any questions for mary um you know please type that in now in that q a um we can also as they come to you you know over the next few minutes or whatever type that in and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation as well Also, uh, you know, I guess we kind of skipped over a couple things uh, with with Carrie Yates too. If there's any questions there, make sure you can let us know, um, or we can get you in touch with Carrie if there's something more uh, technical that you missed and you want to catch up there. With that, um, seeing no questions right now, we will continue to move forward. Um, we have some messages from our congressional delegation. We will hear from Senator Daines, Senator Tester, and Representative Rosendale. Well, welcome to the Montana Agriculture Business Association's Great Montana Ag Rally. And thanks so much for inviting me to share a few words. Agriculture is Montana's number one economic driver, and the strength of Montana's ag would not be possible without your hard work and your dedication to Montana's farmers and ranchers. 
Oftentimes, many folks don't understand what goes into growing our successful crops with a high yield as well as a good grade. Without everybody in this room, we would not see such high quality crops come out from our great state. And like so many industries, Montana Ag was impacted by this pandemic. And that's why I worked to secure support for Montana Ag in several COVID-19 relief packages. In fact, at the end of December, we secured an additional $13 billion for our farmers and our ranchers. So as we begin this new year, please know that we're here to serve you. Thank you so much and God bless. Greetings from Washington, D.C. and thank you for inviting me to share a few words with you today. And thank you to all of the Montana Ag Business Association and Montana Grain Elevator Association members for your dedication to supporting Montana's number one industry, agriculture. Rural communities across Montana depend upon family farms and ranches to stay afloat. And it's absolutely critical that we continue working to keep them in business so we can preserve our way of life. But the fact of the matter is, is we've had our challenges this year. We've had our challenges with having the highest trade deficit in 14 years. That's where we're at right now. But the fact is, we have a new administration coming in. We have the opportunity to reestablish some of our trade networks that we had with previous administrations. Hopefully that will be done. I will be pushing this new administration to do exactly that. And as they say in agriculture, one person's triumph is another person's pity. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing droughts in Brazil that's going to help with our prices moving forward. So I'm very bullish on pricing and prices and the farm economy moving forward in, in throughout the end of this decade. But the fact is, is I need your support. And with that support, I'll be working to push for trade policies that put our family-operated farms and ranches first, fighting for rural business policies that actually work for the folks back home. Because if we're going to pull ourselves out of this pandemic, if we're going to pull ourselves out of these trade wars, it is critical that a rural America comes along with us. And you have my word that I'm going to be pushing the, uh, the Biden administration to do exactly that. You know, 2020 is finally behind us, and this new year presents us with new opportunities to make sure that we bring our rural co communities back from the brink. And I know we can do it if we work together. So thank you again for all the great work that you do. Please stay in touch and be safe out there. Hello, Montana Agricultural Business Association. Thank you for inviting me to speak today as the lone representative for the great state of Montana. I'm excited to join you, even if it is just virtually. I want to start off by thanking you for providing me the opportunity to be in Washington representing Montana values. I know that Montana ranchers and farmers are the best in the world. You're not only the backbone of our state economy, you're the one putting literal food on plates across our nation. That's why one of my first meetings after being sworn in was with the USDA. And after years of serving you statewide, I know that your industry faces more uncertainty and volatility than most. The coronavirus pandemic tested the limits of the United States agricultural community. You all responded with resounding strength and provided the U.S. with unwavering ability to adapt as you continued to put food on the table for all Americans. So I thank you. As a member of the state legislature, and as the state auditor, I supported tax relief and regulatory relief for your industry. I supported measures to roll back unnecessary red tape that burden your businesses, and I have been a champion for your property rights. I will continue to stand up for your interests by slashing through bureaucratic red tape and implementing common sense policies. I will push for country of origin labeling, fair trade deals, and access to rural broadband for our farming and ranching communities. Part of my plan to reignite Montana's economy is making sure farmers and ranchers can thrive during these difficult times by increasing rural access to broadband and wireless technologies. These are technologies that will allow you to expand the use of precision farming, the use of data and connectivity to more effectively plant and tend to your crops, monitor livestock, purchase inputs, and market your products. I am honored to have started serving as your representative in DC this January, and making sure my office is set up to best serve you has been a priority since day one. 
Once the coronavirus pandemic restrictions are lifted, I look forward to seeing you in our nation's capital. I will always be a strong voice for Montana farmers and ranchers, and I look forward to working closely with the Montana Agricultural Business Association moving forward. Please don't hesitate to reach out to my office if there's anything we can help you with. Thank you, and may God bless the great state of Montana. All right. Got uh, a couple updates there from our congressional delegation. Um, with that, this will probably conclude our morning session, our first first of the morning sessions, I should say, of the Great Montana Egg Rally. Um, thank you for joining us. Be sure to stick around at uh, 1030. We will be starting the, uh, the next session, which will be our annual meeting. I strongly encourage you guys to, uh, to log in and, and check that out. There's a couple contested races for the board. Um, you'll hear a legislative update from uh, Chris Lee Evans, and we'll just kind of go through what we've been up to over the last year and our goals moving forward. So I strongly encourage everybody to stick around or uh, come back, I should say, at 1030 and join us for the annual meeting. If, you, uh, if you're not already registered, please go to montanaegbiz.org and uh, register there. All right, thanks everybody and we'll see you soon.